some uh, of uh, what the per, uh, an alcoholic percentage. Right. Yeah. Hey, cool. All right, welcome everybody. This is our first segment of us highlighting women entrepreneurs. Right here today, we have with us the lovely Brittany. Hey guys. And she's here to promote her business. So hello everyone. Again, my name is Brittany. I am the CEO and baker of Sweet Intentions Bakery. As you can see here, I do have some cake jars for these lovely men to try. I have red velvet Oreo cake jars and I also have red velvet Oreo snickerdoodle cake jars. I cake, do cake, cheesecakes. Cake, cake. <laughs> I do cheesecakes. I do cookies. I do pies. I do novelty cakes, which is the specialty cakes where you can shape them into different like type of objects. I've done a Nintendo Switch cake um, before so um, definitely come to me if you see a vision that you want to have um, like I said I do different types of cookies and anything any flavor that you want you just come to me and I can literally bring it to life so if you want your vision done if your son or daughter wants some extravagant shit come to you alright I got a question so oh I have a first question I got a first question I'm about to get you know I'm not too sure how long, how long uh, when you started baking? Well, so I've been baking since high school. I'm 30. So I've been baking since high school, but I've been consistently baking with my business for a year. Okay. So the pandemic really shot everything off yeah. um, for me. So it's been definitely a blessing. And it's been, I've received a lot of support from family, friends, and even strangers that, you know, have seen my social media page, which you can follow on Instagram, underscore Sweet Intentions Bakery. Yeah. Follow it. Sweet Intentions Bakery. Where did you come up with the name for the uh, bakery? Um, so for me, uh, Sweet Intentions Bakery, people always say, I'm like, I'm so nice. I always am approachable. So I was like, okay, and cake is sweet and I'm really good at it. So, and every time I do something, I come with good intentions. I always try to give back. I always try to help the next neighbor because to me, it's not just a business. I also want to change lives. So in the future, like I want to um, go to college. I, already went to college i went to morgan state university for electrical engineering but i also want to go to culinary school to um major in food business so that i can also do a, um, a minor in cannabis so um because for me personally i have arthritis and i also have like muscle spasms so cannabis really helps me um work and actually bake my cakes because i'm constantly standing all day it's, it's times where i actually stand for more than 10 hours in a day more and like baking one cake or yeah, baking cakes? no baking cakes or doing <laughs> oh. several desserts because i do strawberries too on average how many cakes do you think you might make a day mm. So I know for me, the biggest orders I get are around holidays. And I know last year, the most cakes I made was like 16. That's a lot of freaking cakes. And it was 16 cakes. Different it was 16 flavors, orders. different. And how many hours ice. did that take? <laughs> oh, so me, I feel like I, when I go into overdrive and when I'm focused, I don't really focus on the time. But there's times where I didn't get any sleep where I would literally stay up because I want to make sure like the order is good and that it's a lot of love and concentration put into my work. And I, even if I have to do it over, then I will. Now, lately I have been managing my time a little bit better so I can break up my time to do cakes. Yeah, so I'm not overworking myself because one thing, and I can tell you guys, any entrepreneur out there, manage your time properly and also just give your time some grace because there's going to be times, especially with bacon. One day it might a recipe might turn out good, and the next day the shit is just you did the you know, same way. Yeah, different. like it comes out completely uh, different because the weather is different. Um, sometimes you might have a you might use a different oven. Everybody's ovens is different. Yeah, so yeah, so like um, <laughs> speaking of which. Uh, it was one time where my oven downstairs had went out so i had to get it serviced so i had to use the oven we have two kitchens i had to use the kitchen upstairs and it is like would that be like the older oven older yeah oven it was the old it the was the older oven but it also uh baked the cakes a lot faster mm. so 
I was like, oh my God. So luckily I just naturally know like, okay, to keep checking it, but that, you gotta be careful with that too. So whenever it got close to the time with the cake to be done, that's when I would check it. But you Are gotta you be careful. Are like, you not, not supposed to like, so, you're not supposed to open and close it? Exactly, because it lets the heat out and it can affect the rise of the cake. Oh, I got you. If you're looking, you're not cooking. Yeah, listen. <laughs> But see, so I think looking when you uh, what you just said, the looking and you're not yeah. cooking, that applies to food, like actually like cooking like chicken and stuff like that. But with, with baking, like if you open up the oven, you can affect the rise and the texture of the food. So you have to be careful. It's like they know it's that best heat. to just let it sit. They know that heat you just had in there, preheated kind of trust, yeah. trust, trust, the tech, trust the technique. Listen, trust the, you know, trust in the And then a, a, another tip I would say for uh, anybody who's interested in baking or already baking, I would say um, personally, I weigh my ingredients. I just found out for me that just works better. Now some people use like um, measuring cups and stuff like that. I do for certain things, but whenever I'm baking my cake, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have an actual food scale, so I I weigh all of my ingredients. Oh shit! To make See, sure everything's exact. That could also be useful. Some other okay. <laughs> I had a, I had another question, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 You, I want to see the so, question first. I didn't want to, mm-hmm. you know, man. I, so my question is going to my question is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say you say you've been baking since about high school. Mm-hmm. What exactly sparked your interest in baking? Was it? Was it somebody you know in your family that did that was baking, or was it something um, just kind of innate that you? Just actually, the, I would say the person that actually got me into it because my family they don't bake. I'm the baker of the family. The family calls me, uh, but the person that got me interested in baking was Miss Curtis from Fairmont. Well, we had to do the bakeless cheesecake. Shout out to the oh, teacher. That's where it all started. Hold I on. actually bakeless. Yes. How you so, bake so cheese? technically, How you so your cake. traditional, so your, <laughs> so your traditional cheesecake, it has eggs in it, so you have to bake it because eggs technically, um, you have to bake all like the. Yeah, you gotta get a texture out of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, not even just that. They carry a lot of germs and stuff. So you have to make a possibly carry salmonella. The 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 process is called pasteurized. That's that's basically what it's doing. When you cooking eggs, you pasteurizing the eggs to where it's safe to eat and consume without getting sick. Without getting that craft cheese pasteurized. But um, non baked cheesecake doesn't have eggs. You're literally just using cream cheese, sugar, and then whatever flavor. Oh, you're whipping it basically. Yes, just whipping it, putting into a shape. Yep, but you have to be careful. Do you put that in the oven too? No. No. So you put it in the fridge. So you have to be oh, careful. Oh shit! Yeah, you have to be mean, careful nah. while doing that because you can over whip cream cheese and then it won't sit. So it just be like a sloppy. Yeah. Thing. So yeah. most of the time, well, I always say don't waste your ingredients. So instead of just throwing it out, make cheesecake jars. Okay, she sparked your interest. Did she? Um, did she like teach you, give you tips, or did you kind of okay. just? So, um, so she actually sparked my interest, and once I graduated from high school, I went straight to Morgan. So I wasn't I like baked here and there, but I really got into baking a little bit more once I started getting compliments from my cheesecake. So I originally started with cheesecake. I wasn't always doing cakes and cookies and pies. And so stuff. that was like your first dish. Yes. So, um, and matter of fact, the first. The first cake I actually made, Corey tried, and he was a hard critic on it. But I learned from that experience. So you say this shit, hey. <laughs> No, so he nah, said that he said the cake was good, but I was like, it took me a long time to master buttercream. It took me a long time because one, my first mistake was when I made buttercream. Uh, when you make a meringue, you're basically mixing your granulated sugar with egg whites, and you this heat it up. like making meth. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of You heat it up shit. to where the sugar <laughs> is completely dissolved, and then you whisk you whisk it in the uh, in your uh, mixer, your KitchenAid or whatever brand you have, until it has a steep peak. So basically, you lift the whisk up, and if it has a strong little peak at the end, that's when you know it's ready. But I didn't do that. I strictly mixed it and it was still grainy. So he told me, he was just like, okay, so next time, either when you're making American buttercream, which is basically sugar and shortening um, and butter, you have to use powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. So like you learn as you go along. I always say experience is your best teacher. Mm -hmm. Like you learn as you continuously do it. And um, when the pandemic before, well, 
So I lost my government job because I was working for the government in 2019. When I lost my job, I actually went on Instagram to search for a um, search for a mentor and internship for baking because I noticed that my passion started to build more when I used to always think about baking when I was at work. That's when you know, like, this that was, is what you need to do. That was going to be another question of mine. Do you feel like the pandemic helped you realize your dream and your passion more? Absolutely. That's like I did that for a lot of people. Get the people that time Absolutely. off to be like, it's possible. Man, fuck work. I can and, do and, and honestly, it actually pushed me forward because, um, like I said, when I actually I lost have, my job. I needed to do this shit. Yeah, yeah, when I lost my job in November 2019, I found my mentor, um, and she's my friend, a good friend of mine. I worked for her. She has her own bakery. You guys follow her too. Her name is Grand Occasions Bakery. Okay. You guys check her. Her cakes are really, really good. And her artwork is amazing. Um, but yeah, she definitely taught me everything I know. She groomed me, she guided me, and I think I was just in, I started to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. The pandemic took off in March and she was like, well, you have no choice now. You gotta, because she couldn't no longer teach me because the pandemic, like everybody had to shut down. Mm -hmm. So it basically was like, okay, now I gotta stand on my own two feet and force, like I have it. I have everything I need, just go out there and do it. Yeah, and, yeah, and I think like with a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they fear, they fear failure. That's basically what they fear. They fear failure and they fear that if they fail <clears throat> once or twice, it's going to ruin their whole reputation. And it's not showing yourself grace. And I always say to every entrepreneur out there, regardless of what you're doing, definitely show yourself some grace. You're not going to know everything when you first start. You're just not. You want to be able to continuously learn. You can't know everything. I don't want, I, honestly, I don't want to always know everything I, huh. because it leads room to scales, growth. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. All right. Um, so, um, back on the um, teaching or uh, mm -hmm. passing along lessons, do you um, pass along baking tips to people who trying I do. to come up? I do. Have any mentees? So, I actually, it's funny because on Instagram, I actually met. A friend we haven't met in person yet and it's funny her name is Brittany she mm -hmm. lives in Florida and you know she actually came into my inbox one day and was like oh uh, I saw your cheesecakes and they look so good like how do you get the drip to look a certain way or how do you get your cakes to look a certain way and I openly just gave her advice and she was like wow you're actually one of the first people that will actually openly give me advice about some certain shit things. that I'm not with you I could take and never yeah, talk to you yeah because I feel like a lot of are a lot of people fear that if they give out their secrets or give out their skill that it takes away from their business and my thing is, is that like i never want to yeah you, i never you make it somebody a competition before you make them a friend yeah and, and i was like but but i think it's because you take down yeah i think it's it's biased because people feel like competition is bad like it's, it's not, not bad i it learned depends. from competition no, no. <laughs> everybody don't want it was the, everybody don't yeah. want to compete like i said also failure was also it's kind of like people like, it's a loss i took a loss so it's yeah. like i hate it's losing like, because if you think about it all right competition all right if i run my business one way and i've been running my business this way for years mm -hmm. and then someone comes along i get them advice blah 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 and i say they take my advice and they set up shop next to me Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to change the way I've been doing things. You don't have to change. Yeah, to keep up with these people because they probably take what I whatever and oh, just, and put then, their own twist yeah, to it. But, but, twist. Sort of like what's that? Which barbershop was that with the motherfucking other barbershop? Had the fifth floor in the ground you know and all saying? that. Sort of like that, but you know what I'm saying. But I help create that. But also, but that's my competition. I feel like also that's the same way. That's like you can do like <laughs> it's also <laughs> even if you didn't compete with each other, it's like. Sometimes you got two companies. They both doing great. You know what I mean? One company's doing the better. They ain't have to talk, like, they ain't have to even interact with each other. Mm -hmm. They just was on their own passion, on their way together. And they're the same type of business. Business, yeah. You know, what I mean, I mean it's, it's like this. It's, it's, I just feel like I say, you know, we always heard the sprint yeah, a whole lot, right? right? You, I put it. And then in, next look, you know, we heard T-Mobile. If don't nobody, T-Mobile got little phones. Yeah. If don't nobody know, now T-Mobile brought sprint. If don't nobody know, you know, right? Yeah. Juries and Easton. Yeah. Only one of them there now, though. 
Yeah. But I, I always say that it doesn't matter what I, I always want to cheer great. other bakers on. Like I want you to do great. I want you because I know there's something you're gonna bring to the table that I'm not gonna be able to bring. Or if I can't, is is you've been blessed to do that particular thing. So I, I believe that there's multiple people that can do the same thing, but it's always gonna be something special about you that you're gonna bring to the table that people are always gonna remember you for. Like Prime example, you literally see McDonald's and Burger King buy each other all the time. Mm -hmm. You see Popeyes and KFC buy each other all the time. Does that take away from each one? No, because you're always going to have customers who prefer one or the other or prefer both. But you Hell. have people in the middle, and that, that's yeah. where the divide comes. Everybody that's in the middle, that's the same thing as anything in like politicians. If, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm this, I'm that, and I'm on the fence, it's something about the other one that's going to make me go there. But... I was speaking of competition. Do they? Um, I know they. They got big, big competitions and things like that. Do you participate in things like that? My or? dream is to definitely go on like a baking show. I definitely want to go on a baking competition, mm -hmm. like hey, whether on the Food Network or um, I know a lot of they're creating like, a lot of baking network. shows now. <laughs> they're creating a lot of competitions now. So hey. I, huh? Yo, we had a cook off. It you wasn't, need, you, bake off you say experience Listen, is the bake best off, teacher. Listen, bake off, we could definitely have a bake it off. Was the, experience is the best teacher. And that wasn't the best <laughs> put together event, but it was nice. It was good. It was, it nice. was good from what I saw. It, it was, was nice. nice. It was nice. You know, but yeah, that's, that's, but that was first of all, shout out to the editor. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the editor. <laughs> that, it's, it's just like anything in life. Like, I feel like when McDonald's was first, the, the guy who started McDonald's was the first guy started making McDonald's. Yeah, everybody was like, bullshit, nobody want to eat that. It was way bigger shit before bigger. McDonald's. And he was like, all right, I got some fast food shit for you. It's fast food. People love fast food. In an era where people was going home and, and cooking and everything, mm -hmm. and families and mothers, and he outbeat families. Like, look, mom tired of cooking. I know daddy ain't about to cook. Come here. He, that's already serving. People got jobs. Ain't created jobs. And McDonald's is... And even when people say, oh, McDonald's, pay this, pay that, they also, it was like, all right, fuck it, you do pay this, we also go have a college program. If you do good enough, you can join this college program, we'll get what you want to do, you still work for us, we have pay for your college. They, they, they got incentives and shit. Yep, and I was so, just I mean, about to say that a lot of the times that you, a lot of businesses We're not really taught to take advantage of incentives, really. So. Yeah, it, but well, you, they there, though. It's, it's cause you don't see that dollar wise. Yeah. No, like, it is. Sometimes we don't really read yeah. everything either. Like when yeah. we go into a job, we don't be reading that it's shit. It's because it's a cultural thing. We you sign as, our name. We I as, know what it means. We as black this people money you can fire me, learned. I can quit. <laughs> Say, we as black people have always learned that like there's always something hidden in the fine, yeah. the fine yeah. line. But we we know so, better too though. It, it's, it's a, and there's a lot of it's not a lot of it's never too good there's not a lot of it that we actually sit there and comb through the fine print to make but sure that it's he, 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 he be reading all that shit <laughs> nigga I oh, read I it first I, I, because the thing is so there was a um, I forgot there was somebody who's like super mega rich and he said somebody asked him like what was like what's one of the best keys to your success and he said Never turn down an opportunity. Yeah, you think it's a bad opportunity? It's like no publicity, said, bad publicity. No, name, you know, bad yeah, publicity. Said, you, never, somebody never knows no. something about you now. Is there um, a famous baker who you might like <laughs> see you know, or look see their work or something? And you might look up to or try to model yourself. After oh, most anything? definitely. Like I have a couple of bakers. Let us know because I'm not really up on the names of them, but I would okay, like well, to know. The last Yolanda, famous uh, cook I know is Yo Martha Stewart. <laughs> well, Yolanda Gamp, she's a Canadian baker. That was actually, now you're talking about inspiration. That's probably what made me want to do novelty cakes. Because I used to see her cakes all the time. And I remember she made a cake look like a pot of spaghetti. And then she made a cake look like an actual apple pie. Like it looked like a giant apple pie. I ain't gonna pie. hold you. My favorite show is to watch during Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. It ain't even a Halloween shit. It be the Halloween bake offs when we niggas be making zombie houses. Yeah, and like. I'm like, bro, I eat the shell of that cake. I don't eat sweets. I'm not a sweet person. I don't hey, eat you, sweets that's, at all. That's, that's a nice I will, I'll watch that shit. That's cake. Huh? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so. Animal. It's, 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 it's <laughs> kind of like the biggest cake you've made. The biggest cake I made was for a wedding, and it was a three-tiered cake. It was and it like was, a three, like one, I think two. it was like eight, over 80 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was like, so far, that was the biggest cake I made. But was it like the 
like also your most designed cake as well. Yes. So it was it was like very detailed and the bride loved it. I, and that I think that's the the satisfaction I get too. Like I know every single order I do, I'm not going to get a review back. Um, but when I do and I get customers say, you made my day so much special That's and the cake was amazing. Like that literally is so satisfying. It's like my hard work paid off. Yeah. Like, you know, like I said, I want to start changing lives. Like it's, to me, it's not just cake. I want to make an impact. So like I'm currently working on my website right now and I actually want to start giving back. Um, I, I'm a part of a sorority, so I, we do community service a lot. So, um, I want to go to like the Ronald McDonald house and, you know, donate stuff to them and go to different shelters and donate stuff. Now, I don't know what the restrictions are due to COVID, but, you know, I definitely want to, it, to me, is more than just baking treats that's, and just awesome. feeding your, your hunger. It, to me, is more than just that. That's very that's, 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 that's that much. Doubling up back to the uh, comment you said that. about uh, wanting to help people like this, you mm -hmm. heard her being the subject that nice you gave her that you gave her, mm -hmm. you gave her, you know, good advice. Mm -hmm. Um, because of course, you know, me as a chef. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much competition as a chef around. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm hard pressed if somebody asks me, Oh, what's the recipe on this, recipe on that? I'm like, mm -hmm. if you're somewhere close, I'm less inclined to give you more of my recipe versus you said the girl was in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at that point you're no you're not a mm -hmm. you're not, not a competition in my market. Mm -hmm. Which means I can help oh, you out. Man, that's, that's I can the let biggest, you, that's I can the let biggest, you thrive I think out. That could be your biggest but downfall. I'm also I'm also a firm believer that be cautious not to give all your information away. People blowing you up already? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a firm believer that just like be cautious of what information you give out for free. Right. Like I don't give out everything. information you should be able to pay for. I say this so, at yeah, the same time, like it's always been trade. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's always been trade. But also, when you do stuff with good intentions, you get good rewards. Yeah, and it's sweet you know intentions I mean? bakery. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, like you said, like, if I believe your sweet intentions, it's like you said, I do it because I do it because I do it. Mm -hmm. So, even if you get over on me at the end of the day, I'm not really mad. I'm probably like, damn, this job messed up. But mm -hmm. I did it, so I ain't mad at the choice I made because... This is what I wanted to do. And that you as a person, you took it and did it some bad intentions with it as like, you could be like, oh, I did this. Oh, I'm the creator of this. It's the same way people with comedic comments and shit still jokes yeah. and shit, shit like that. And it's the same way actors and shit do different things too. Um, it's regarding your, like, your specialty. I know you say you started with cheesecake. Mm -hmm. I don't know that man mean that still be, but. Oh, what no, is it is. <laughs> oh, that, that's your specialty and your opinion and the customer's opinion? Yes. And is that also your favorite to cook or bake? Um, I'm sorry. Or do you have another one? Like, well, yeah, cheesecakes, because that was literally my first, I had time to master it completely. That was your first. You still so got that love was, for it, though. Yeah, yeah like, I love, I bake. love baking cheesecake because, one, I don't. I, I notice like a lot of people aren't big on cheesecakes. They're just I, I not. So when people try my cheesecakes and they absolutely love it, I Jeez. always like win it over the people that don't really care for that particular thing. So if you have somebody's like, oh, I don't really care for cheesecakes, and they try mine, they're like, man, this is the best. Like I will eat this again. That is so satisfying. And actually, one of my customers, she's one of my dear friends and my uh, Neo. Um, she actually suggested a Snickerdoodle cheesecake. She was I like, that, and man. she was like, can you make me a snickerdoodle cheesecake for me and my boyfriend? I was like, sure. And made it, and it's been a hit since. People have been ordering snickerdoodle cheesecakes. And honestly, Roger's mouth is the best. I'll take it one. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I would say, like, I want to become the bakery in the area that's known for anything snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle I, I cookies, you snickerdoodle the time, pie. Like, like, so do you have like, employees, or is it just No, you it's for literally now? just me. I like, feel like that's, you, I feel like that's what's up because so, when you finally yeah. get to a stage. So, what is Jay? Like, what is the. The ultimate big, goal. The big picture. I know she's so, going to get that sweet thing. intention. So I definitely want she to have a storefront. Store <laughs> I want to have a storefront, but I want to have a storefront in like different areas. So like areas that that have like a lot of traffic, so and like a lot of travelers. Like the city, I think the city. Yeah. Is, so like I want to have a storefront in like Philly, California, Nevada. Like I I want to have different, and then like I said, I want to um, study cannabis. So I definitely want to have, you know, different. 
Yeah, like and had my own week. dispensary and had and sell my own stuff. So, oh, so you want to get some edible? Yeah. I said, I said, bonus. are they currently available? No, oh, not, not right yet, now. Not so I believe in. So a lot of the times when I'm creating something new, like before I released this flavor, I had test like actual test tasters. So I don't believe in just throwing something out there. I have actual friends or family. Up for <laughs> <laughs> you just let me know. Like I'll say, hey guys, I have a new flavor. I want you to try. Let me know how it is. If you like it, give me your views on it. When you so start she, your cannabis, she, let she, me know. She, she's coming to me for a couple of her. Life. Yeah, she told matter of fact, hard critic. Um, hard critic here. Well, it's because. I was Good a hard, hard critic. I'm gonna touch on the camera. I was a hard critic <laughs> because, I mean, she she's pretty much she's family to me. I know. Good, so good she friend, she knew I, she knew I went to culinary Honest school truth. before that. So she knew she could come to me and ask, you know, she could actually get a good. You what, know, what was your quote? What was your quote? You said, "Don't sell this bullshit." You said, no, no, no. I told her, like, you know, it's good, but you missed out on us, like. Uh, oh, he had a fucking real rough. chef moment. He said, like, "Yeah, could a little bit of whiskey, a little bit more, can left it in about good two minutes." Yeah. Well, no, we literally just okay. had this discussion. How many pounds was she off? <laughs> she measured. Oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> but, no, we literally had this discussion when um, I gave him samples of my chocolate chip cookie, uh, chocolate chip with walnut cookies. Right. So, like I said, I bake all the time. So it might be one time where I'm like, dang, it didn't come out like the way I wanted this time. What went wrong? So then he was like, well, you know, like uh, when you uh, bake with nuts, it kind of like doesn't spread as much as a, your an, another cookie. And I was just like, oh, OK. And then he like went into the food science about like what happens when you cook with nuts. And I'm just like, oh, OK. So, so it, it teaches it just started me something. Made it like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like. Honestly, uh, because snickerdoodle cookies are just literally sugar, sugar, they spread a lot more than like any other cookie. So you can you literally, a little goes a long way with a snickerdoodle cookie and it will still spread versus uh, a chocolate chip cookie. It has chocolate chips in it. And uh, with chocolate chips, what, there's always the moisture or something from the dough or something well, like that. Well, okay, he's trying to get I'm trying to get it too. He's trying to get it too. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, when you cook with nuts and things like that, especially with baked goods, nuts are porous. So All right, with they pour how? They're porous, which means they no, can the thicken them. I'm, so I'm going into it. Okay. <laughs> porous means they can they can absorb moisture. Yeah, How's and yeah, like, yeah your nuts can sweat. <laughs> right. I don't want to do That's that's expelling that's moisture. That's not absorbing it. <laughs> but um, it's probably it's, you can take a lot of heat before it starts sweating. <laughs> I got, I got yeah, but yeah. So when it, what happens is that moisture that would that would normally allow that cookie to spread because it has like that much of a like the fat content that moisture would allow it to spread. That nut, those nuts in it are porous, so they're actually kind of sucking some of it in. Yeah. So the cookies don't so, spread as much. They kind of stay in. So when, did you try it again after? I it? did, and it worked. Yeah. So what you put like more butter in it, or so no? So don't get the rest of you. No, 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 no. You don't. So you never add like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a never, butter adder. I go. It might no, so good question. Good question. <laughs> so you never add like that extra butter or good. extra flour or extra sugar because it definitely does affect the texture of your cookie. Now, as far as nuts, I just decrease how much nuts I put in the actual batter because then so it allows like, it to spread. More. A cookie probably this big. You probably put like six nuts in it. Well, no. So I mix my nuts actually in the dough and but then I, I scoop control. it. You don't really know how many nuts. Is. Yeah. No. Well, well no. I know it's, it's going to be you pretty much do it by volume. Yeah. So. Huh? Like, so, so you only put a certain amount of nuts in the. So you got. Of dough. I, I'm gonna I'm break yeah. it down. So you got 50, 50, uh, 50 nuts in the bag, right? No, 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 no. So I don't do it like that. So I use a measuring cup. So I'll take like a one one cup and pour it in the batter, um, in the dough. So if I was using two, I cut it down to one and a half. See how that works, okay, so and then I cut you, it down to so one. So you're judging your base off how much, how many cookies you are going to make. Yes. That's what I want to know. Yeah. All right. I have a uh, question going back to the edibles. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know how far along you are in your plan with those, but regarding those, what um, baked goods mm -hmm. could we look forward to that would be uh, edible? Like, yeah, in the future, most definitely. But I'm saying, what kind? What kind of? Um, oh, cupcakes, cupcakes cookies, cookies, treats, chocolate covered strawberries, chocolate bars, anything. 
like I definitely want to make like um, infused cheesecakes. Everything. It's too difficult. No, but it you uh, just use can of sugar. No, I'm saying say I want to. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I'm saying, say I want to, uh, 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 I want an edible, right? Uh, but I want a wedding cake. Oh, then, so. That's for, the same thing. I want to have like a, a section of a uh, regular nah, food man, and edibles. Because yeah. everybody, can, everybody can go to work and they eat don't off the edibles. Don't touch my <laughs> Bring your own food. So, yeah, I could definitely. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So I definitely can see myself doing like an actual cake, like an infused cake. Because I actually do like uh, infused liquor cakes now. So like people say, oh, I want I want Patron in it or I want rum in it. And I'd be like, okay, that's fine. I can't like, eat a whole cake to get drunk. I'm not that much. So, so this, I need this, like three slices. No, to be so like, this, I'm this trapped. is the thing. So people uh, this, put the whole this, bottle in my cake. But no, but see, this is the thing, and people don't. This is when food science comes in. People <laughs> don't realize that when you uh, substitute. So, me personally, I know some bakers who substitute the dairy, like milk or whatever, and they use alcohol. But one thing about that is it'll have the flavor of the alcohol, but it won't get you drunk because when you bake. With alcohol, it burns out. So basically, you have to double infuse it. So I have like, um, what is it? Like a like a, a injector, and I literally take the liquor and I sit there and I infuse the cake after it's done. Because when you bake it with the alcohol, it's gonna burn out. Ah, you burn okay. Out the actual I, alcohol, yeah, and then you might have you might sense. have the flavor, but you got like. What the fuck is like this? say if you make a rum cake if you make a rum cake you have to you have to so that's why people put the shots on top type shit yes because if not it's it's gonna have the flavor but it's not gonna it's not you're not gonna no, fry. You know, sometimes get it's tipsy. tricky though because I, I ain't trying once, to get tipsy I once had a steak right? mm-hmm. but I seasoned it mm-hmm. people use wine weed. and shit with steak all the time right? I seasoned it with the weed and I don't know I felt like that's something people wouldn't think would work but I know for a fact and it's yeah. So, so cannabis and alcohol is different. Yeah, we, 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 we can burn it. You can, <laughs> it's actually yeah. 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 smoke. Yeah. I was just stirring at the wall and shit. And, and then, then you know, like, when you broke. heat it up, it activates. It's, it's like, like, yeah, the yeah. THC melts all the you butter. You decarb it, so. Yeah, man was out on the couch. I know about the marijuana game. I don't think the cannabis is lovely. But I also had some shit. And I and I like to see like I love the fact that I'm seeing more, especially our people getting involved into cannabis because we was already involved in cannabis to begin with. Oh, I did. But it but it was used against us for so long that now we we starting to take demand of the business and we're starting to become entrepreneurs and starting to do more with cannabis, open our own dispensaries and things like that. And I always say shop black. Like if anything, like I for me personally even if I have a bad experience, I'll come to you personally just to tell you my experience, but I won't bash you. I would like, I never believe in that. I never believe in going on social media bashing a business because at the end of the day, you have to think of it as a lot of our people weren't taught how to be entrepreneurs and how to be business people. So they're literally learning as they go along. So I always say have a, just a little bit more patience. I'm not saying excuse bad behavior. Definitely approach the bad behavior and let them know like this is what needs to be changed in order for you to have me as a returning customer. But definitely just have a little bit of patience. And a little bit of kindness. I ain't gonna hold you. I was doing some work earlier today mm-hmm. in the food business, picking up. Mm-hmm. And this white lady using the fucking um, a Chinese restaurant, mm-hmm. picking up food. A nice one. It was a call. Uh, I don't know that wrong one. name out. It's funny shit. Though. So the lady was in there trying to get the. I'm where I'm trying to get the food too. I'm working trying to get the pick of the food, drop the food off. Boom. It's fucking my, like she said, my money muffed my time up. But the Asian lady was 100% right, correct. She walked past the counter. I was like, she said, hold you can't walk past here? You can't walk past here? I was like, why are you doing? You doing, you're doing too much. She's like, I'm waiting. On, she's like, I go back outside. Every, she said, everybody else is waiting in the order too. Everybody else is waiting on the table. I was like, she right. She right. And she was like, she walked outside. She on the phone, somebody's phone. Well, I call these people and call these people. She said, no, I'm not just going to cancel the order. No, I'm not going to cancel. But these two business, because she's working too. Mm-hmm. But the business is also supposed to be providing the food because the food you know, it's supposed to be you're done. Supposed time to time to no time to run. It's my order, but at the same time, if it if it don't say it's not ready on the app that you're working on, then it's not ready. 
Yeah, but not- at the same time, I can hold you. The lady came, she was pressing shit, but she was pressing the good way. But the other lady was like, ah, you press it too much. It gave back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then, like, towards the end, the lady called the cop. The other lady walked upstairs, called the cop. It's fucking endless orders. And I'm talking, order, 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 order. Everybody who's there, order probably was already bagged up. But I don't know, because I don't know going to the back. So that's why I say I always respect people. It that's could be food. like that, though, because I They, I, I they finished everybody at the same time. It's like, all right, so everybody supposed to come in this time frame. Let's mm-hmm. get it all done, put it all back. Let's not mess it up. It's a big order. Mm-hmm. So, and it might and it's a Sunday, too, so it might be less workers back there. Yeah. So I respect all that shit. So I ain't really say shit. I was like, they both kind of right. But it's the petty shit that fucking restaurant did at the end, mm-hmm. because the lady was motherfucking pressing. But it was like, ah, she got you back. Good shit. The lady started calling out everybody else order beside the one who was there first. I was like, she's like, what's your order? So right here. Said, oh, thank you. I said, thank you. The lady's like, oh, now she ain't trying to get my order. I was like, oh, this shit is weird. But see, like, <laughs> I'm I more, respect both. I'm ways. a firm believer that the customer is not always right. I'm like, neither. It's, because I, I've, <laughs> I've dealt better. with some difficult but, customers but how before. You say they came out with all this shit. They came out with everybody. But shit. no, I'm telling you, I, I used to work at a restaurant. They like, all right, so it be lying. You make the plates, you pack them down, make the plates, somebody finish it off, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But niggas would stack them up instead of passing them out when they could just easily pass them out and got some of them people out of there. But it's not told. What are you saving them? What are you saving them for? It's done. Get that shit out of here. Yeah, I feel you. That's what that's lazy shit. Get that shit out of here. Bro. Bro. But then I said the, the restaurant did the petty here. shit by well, saying. That's, that's, when that, when that comes down to right. once it comes, once it comes down to you, that shit's finished. Well, there's, you there's, there's two ways of expediting. There's two ways of expediting food. So you can they stack, did it officially. You, so you can stagger it, the, the, which uh, is how you were saying, like you know, this is out, this is out, this is out. Boom! Check, right. check, check, we check, have check, these, check, we check, have check. these three orders. They can go out. We know we have another person at this table that's waiting on something, but we can get this out right now. Yeah, because we still have our our cooks working on these these are three other things. We don't want this sitting in the window dying. They can get this food out here already. Boom! Mm-hmm. So that's your that's staggering, and then you have bulk, which is what you were talking about them just having everything piled up at one time and then. All right, cool. We have everything now. Push. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's called ruckus. That's called ruckus. Because <laughs> <wait, laughs> while I'm waiting forty minutes for my shit, and they was already here twenty minutes waiting for their shit. And next person right. here was waiting fifty minutes. That's, that's and everybody right. complaining at one that's time. Everybody like, focus. I ain't about to come in. Hey, everybody can focus. No, but that's that's that's, 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 that's the restaurant focus. world, and I feel like that's, that's something focus. you might have to deal with. <laughs> you know, customers. And you already just said you don't yeah. feel like customers always right. So, um, you know. Wrap it up for the. For some, for our yeah. life. Well, I mean, I do have some jars that oh, you guys try. can try, I'm and I bought some Oh, of course, y'all grabbed the Snickerdoodle one. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just the one nearest to me, honestly. <laughs> but this one right here is the red velvet Oreo. You all sweet right now. Oh, you all sweet oh, right now. I mean, I don't Listen. eat sweet, so you about to get a cake. <laughs> I stopped eating. Oh no! Listen, now. That's another goal of mine too. So um, I noticed, like, because my best friend who's going to be doing the edible business with me, she hmm? she is. Um, oh yeah, Juliana, hey girl. So um, she actually is allergic to gluten. If anybody knows what that is, it, it basically helps bind ingredients together. That's what helps cakes. Um, holds the ingredients and cakes together so that it can rise and everything, have its texture, hold, hold its moisture and everything. I had never heard of gluten until I seen gluten free. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> it makes in um, a lot of a lot of restaurants and a lot of things you'll be surprised when you read the label have gluten in it. And um, you know, I was bringing her on too because, you know, she has taught me a lot because I've never made gluten desserts until she asked for gluten free desserts. And that's a to- totally different avenue. I've met bakers who are strictly do gluten free products and they are amazing. But that takes time too because I actually made a mistake thinking that gluten free cupcakes bake the same time as regular cupcakes, they actually take longer. Because it's not the same. Yeah, thing. because it takes longer to bind the ingredients together because you're take they took out the gluten, so it takes longer for the ingredients to bind together and for it to bake. So if your average cupcake takes about fifteen to sixteen minutes, a gluten free cupcake might take twenty two to twenty three minutes to bake. So I literally took out and then. I also say all gluten free products aren't the same, just like all cake mix aren't the same, all flowers aren't the same. I tell you so something, I always say, 
Oh, as far as like cake mix, yeah. Duncan Hines, hands down. Duncan I love Hines. Duncan Hines. Duncan Hines, one day we will have a collaboration. A yeah, listen, partner, spon uh, sponsorship, all that. I'm speaking it into existence. Oh, yeah, but um, yeah, this is um, <laughs> this is right here is um, it's absolutely fire. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> fucking amazing. And they're eating the eat sweets, but this night was sweet. It's it tastes like cake. It's not sugar. Yeah, it has a it's fucking moist. Moist is a nasty word to me, but it's moist. <laughs> <laughs> and they're currently eating the red velvet Oreo snickerdoodle cake, which I will be providing for oh Thanksgiving my. and Christmas ah. as a pound cake. So I'm going to be posting my flyer tomorrow, guys, of what the, the different flavors in. I'm going to be offering for the pound cakes so you can order for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay, so anything else you want to tell them before we wrap this up? This is fire. <laughs> this is fire. Anything you I ain't gonna hold you. I don't think I'm gonna hold you. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't eat sweet. Um, it's not that, sweet. Thank you. It's not sweet. And and I, you can remind them where they can find you. Yes. yes. So definitely follow me on Facebook at Sweet Intentions Bakery. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Sweet Intentions Bakery. And I am starting my own YouTube channel so I can teach you guys some baking tips. I want to get into teaching college students how to do easy test, baking recipes. Test, so test. stay tuned. I am working on my website currently. So stay tuned for that as well. And I have a big, big project coming up because I want to have my own dessert line that uh, revolves around black Damn. culture and comedy. So stay tuned for that. Oh, man. Okay. Um, Thank you for coming out. Thank you for moment. having me. I had a Your great lovely time. Lovely fucking no, we business. No, I, we really, really, if you are our first you guest that this, actually this came through, so just know we always out to her, yo. be a memorable guest. We always remember the first. Yeah. You know? Always appreciate the first also. And then also, guys, if you can do me a favor, I want you to follow a few people for me. If you can, mm -hmm. like, people always ask me why my stuff tastes so good. It's because I believe in feeding your soul and feeding your energy so that way your product comes out good. So definitely follow these guys. Hilarious. Hilarious. And they always talk about different topics that are going on today and that you can relate to. Also, follow Adulting Makes Me Wine and follow Tizzle, Tizzle My Fancy, well, hold on, Tizzle My Fancy Events, I believe. Hold on one second, let me get it correct. Let me get it correct. Shout your folks out. They did a lovely job helping you and everybody helping each other. That's why it's black business and black owned. I, mm. Yeah, the... it's Tizzle Your Fancy Events. Tizzle Your Fancy oh, Events. Oh, oh, um, and follow oh, oh. Adulting Makes Me Wine. And um, also, like, follow any uh, comedy podcast as well. I follow um, Damn Internet You Scary. I watch Kev on stage. So everything that you taste is pure love because I believe in feeding your soul, laughter, all that. All that's important. That shit just clean my palate from alcohol. <laughs> my palate. Nigga, right. that shit tastes like cake. It's a wrap, man. Right, well, thank, thank you for coming you out. For thank coming. you guys. Appreciate you. We love you. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll hope to see you again in another second. Yes, you will.